All right, I want to talk today, I want to pick up on Joshua. It's our story series. I've been mean, talking about a series about stories we know about, and I want to connect them to our lives where it's their story is actually my story. And the name Joshua is actually a derivative of the word Jehovah, Jehovah, which means I am that I am. And, and in the Hebrew, the name Joshua from the Old Testament is exactly the same name for Jesus in the New Testament. They didn't call him Jesus in, in, in Jerusalem. They called him Yahshua. That was his name. And then we just took the English version of Jesus, but we didn't take the English version of Joshua. So it's really, it could be if we kept the same name, it would be the book of Jesus in the Old Testament, and Jesus in the New Testament, or the book of Joshua in the Old Testament, and Yahshua in the New Testament. It's the same name. But ultimately, it derives from this I am understanding. Capital I, capital A-M. I am. And, and, and Joshua, this I am, his story is my story, I believe is about determination. Determination is a quality that's inside of us. Determination is a quality of God. I believe it's a spiritual quality. Ultimately, determination is our power to make things happen, to make things happen in our life. We could have all the dreams, all the goals, all the ideas, all the gifts, all the talents, but we need this determined mindset to sort of move it from within us to an expression in our life. And I believe determination, its foundation is a spiritual understanding. Determination generally is the quality that many times is what sees us through challenges, that allows us to overcome tragedy in our life, determination. And so we know Joshua, most of us must know, he took the people into the promised land, all right? We all have our promised land goals. We all have ideas. We all have places we want to be in our mind. We feel like we're not there yet. And, and I, I'm going to refer to that as the promised land goal. And it is through this I am, this I am in us, this indwelling Christ, if you will, this power of God inside of us that transcends all exterior challenges. Through this I am, we lay hold of determination. We just heard Reverend Shirley in the meditation, I am inspired. We say these two words, I am, so many times without recognizing the power of what we place after it. And we do have a power to declare what I am in every situation. We do have a power to declare where we are going in our life because it begins with an idea that expresses itself through our actions. And ultimately, the story of Joshua is the story of action. It is the story of determination. It is the story that begins when he notifies his people the thoughts in our head, whenever we read about people, it's that multitude of thoughts in our head. He notifies the people that they would pass over into the promised land. All right? To give you some historical context, Moses died, and Moses, they were wandering around for 40 years. And 40 is a number in ancient times, in the Hebrew language, and in biblical context that means as long as it takes. All right, it takes as long as it takes to heal. It takes as long as it takes to get the degree. It takes as long as it takes to find the right relationship. But whatever it is, 40 represents to move through something for as long as it takes to get to the other side. And so Joshua commands these people that they're going to pass over the Jordan River and enter the Promised Land. And, and, and then so he also says, and we're doing this in three days. Well, 40 years we've been going to this promised land. As long as it takes. 
And now there's a new mindset, a new determination, a new leader in consciousness that says, I'm done. Enough is enough. We are out of here in three days. I mean, is, this is our story. Have you ever gotten to a point in your life where just enough was enough? Where you've just walked in circles, or, you know, over and over. You've prayed, you've visioned, you've treasure mapped, you've tried, you, and then you, you always find yourself in the same place, but something inside of you just clicks. Do you ever have that click, click? Let me hear you click. Say, it's clicked in me, Rev. I mean, it's clicked, and enough is enough. That's what kicks in determination. That's what kicks in the activity of the Holy Spirit in us. That's what kicks in the no prisoners taken. I am moving through this once and for all. In each of us, there are goals. We don't lack goals. Nobody in this room lacks goals. Nobody in this room lacks desires. Nobody in this room lacks infinite treasure in our mind. It's that action that moves us, and action, I believe, is a result of spiritual determination. We began on, I believe, Mother's Day, and we spoke about Ruth and how she represents that focus in us. Where the God idea is, I will go. Where God in me lives, I will live. Remember? And then, then we spoke about perception last week. And, and, and Joseph, that perception, that perceiving quality. Well, first, if we're out of focus and we focus in on something, then we perceive it. It's still in our mind. We're still living the world inside out. And so determination kicks our life into action. When we enter the promised land, whatever your promised land is, it begins with a spiritual realization and requires some sort of action. Ultimately, we live from spirit. We have faith in spirit. We understand that God in us is the activity of spirit in our life. It sometimes can, can kick in with a simple breath, a simple deep breath, a simple shift in the perception changes our determination. And so Joshua's mission was to bring the people into a realization that it's time to enter Canaan. It's time to cross the Jordan. Enough is enough. And so what we see is determination always been, begins with a realization in our mind. Once we realize something in our mind, it's ours. That whatever amount of time and whatever activity and, and whatever the process is to get there, if we fully realize, something in our mind, without all that mind chatter, talking us out of it, weighing it, balancing it, without all those pros, those cons. Once we realize something is ours in our mind, there's no stopping us. Truly, there's no stopping us. Determination will always lead to Canaan. Determination will always lead to the promised land. And what sort of land is this land that was promised? What is the, 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 the Canaan quality that makes it so unique? Well, Moses, it was revealed it was the land flowing with milk and honey. It was a fruitful country. It was a country with, inf uh, you know, a land that had infinite benefits. It was also a very fertile land surrounded by dry deserts, we know. It's, it, on one side is Babylonia, on the other side is Egypt, and everybody has to cross through Canaan in the ancient world. And, and so it, it's the place in us where all our thoughts meet. The good, the bad, the ugly, the positive, the negative, the confident, the doubtful. It's the place in us that offers fertile ground. Yet we have to cross over to get to it all the time. Cross over what? Cross over our past. Cross over our fears. Cross over those old thoughts. And what we read in the first chapter, in the first verse of Joshua, is that Jehovah spoke to Joshua. That's what he phrases it as. Well, let's translate that. I am that I am spoke to I am 
that I am becoming. In other words, Jehovah is this I am that I am. That's how you translate it. In the English Bible, in King James Version, it's translated as Lord. But the correct Hebrew translation is I am that I am, spoke to I am that I'm becoming. Because we're always listening to this voice. We're always aware of God as we understand God somehow speaking through us, expressing through us. But many times we change the channel. Many times we lower the volume. It requires a receptive state of mind to really understand spirit in our life. It requires a complete receptive state of mind. And it, we, we understand this comes from prayer, this comes from stillness. Sometimes it comes from meditation. Other times it comes from a quiet walk. It can come from music. Rarely, rarely, not always, but rarely, does it come from another person. That's just my experience. Rarely does the guidance of God really show up you know, from another person. For me, with me, it's, it's a crossover experience. And so even though we may see the promised land, we may see the goal, we may see the dream, we may see the good that is before us, there are difficulties that we have to overcome. And ultimately, I believe the only difficulty we need to overcome is our own self-doubt. It's our own self-determination. See, Joshua represents that determination quality inside of us. We need to accept that we self-determine most of the outcomes in our life. We need to really fully understand that, that there is no gain except when we put forth an effort. What do they say in the gym? No pain, no gain? No pain, no gain, Andrea? Andrea, no pain, no gain? You know, just, to just meet with Andrea's trainer. She'll tell you. You know, and, and we need to be strong and courageous. And above all, in those crossover moments where determination kicks in and, and that self-doubt does show up, you know, we need to really recognize God as we understand God is with us. It's not a power outside of us. It's an expressive spirit in us. The goal was to always enter a new land. But let me tell you something about Joshua that makes him different than Moses, okay? When we have a goal and we want to put our determination behind it, Joshua gave everybody a three-day deadline, all right? We have all the goals in the world, but if the deadline is like, oh, and the by and by, you know, we'll just keep putting it off and putting it off. It'll be like the carrot on the stick. The first task of determination, I think, really sets inside of us is it gives us a deadline. It gives us a time that says, we are going to make this happen in three days. Goals need deadlines. Goals need objectives. Goals need plans in our life. And the place, first plan, I already gave you the first quality, it's to realize this is mine. And once I realize this is mine, we start moving. The second thing that happens is we cross over the Jordan, and the Jordan represents that obstacle. It represents this unknown, crossing from where we are into a blessing. What is your blessing? What is it? Only you know your blessing. Right now, you feel like you're separated from your blessing. That's why I'm not living my blessing. You know, if we, I'll tell you how you know if, if you're on the wrong side of the Jordan. As soon as you think about something, a blessing, a goal, a dream, a relationship, a house, a job, any of these things, health, as if the first thing that happens in your mind is you have the excuse ready of why you're not blessed today, you're on the wrong side of the Jordan. Too often we walk around life with, with this list that I'm ready. Oh, excuse number 43, I'm this, I'm that, I'm too tall, oh, I'm too dark, I'm too light, I'm too way, uh, I look like this, I talk like this, I'm not educated, I'm too educated. That was a new thing, I'm too educated, you know. That's a new thing I'm hearing about jobs, they're telling me I'm too educated. I'm like, well then outsmart them and convince them and give them the job, you know. It, it, it's like, if we walk around and we have an excuse ready, then we're on the wrong side of the Jordan. And so it represents crossing over from the land of excuses to actually embracing the blessing. 
embracing the blessing. Once we receive it in our mind, we are blessed. There's no stopping us. You know, sometimes we actually find ourselves, wherever we are, age irrelevant, we find ourselves in the middle of our life. And we feel like we're nowhere near where we're supposed to be headed. And so the question to ask is, how do we find a way from the person we've become to the one that we know we could have been? How do we find a way today from the person we believe we are to the person we think we could have been? Cross over the Jordan. Cross over into the blessing. Believe it in your mind. Recognize there was no destination. There was no detour, as we spoke about last week, that didn't serve a purpose that brought you closer to the spirit of the living God in your life. And sometimes the best way to move into an unknown situation is to take a small but familiar step. See, crossing the Jordan was familiar for the Israelites. They already crossed the Red Sea. They knew what it was like to cross a barrier. And so sometimes we have to deal with something today that seems ordinary in a way that's not ordinary at all. We have to take that risk, in, in other words. We're always going someplace new all the time. One of the exciting things about going on a vacation to a place you've never been there before is you've never been there before. It's exciting. You know, I, you know, I get two weeks vacation, and if the church or the board or everybody said, oh, we're going to send you to Hollywood Beach, I'd be like, huh? Wow, you know, big vacation, right? Tim and I were talking about vacation just today. You know, and I'm just saying that the point, the exciting is, is to go to a place you've never been there. So live that as a consciousness of your life. Don't hold back. Take those ordinary days and recognize there's something new, a turn, a detour, a crossroad, a decision that you can make. What does Joshua do? Joshua sends two spies into the city of Jericho. Once they cross the Jordan, right on the other side of the Jordan is Jericho. And they have to overtake Jericho. And, and so what these spies learn, you know, is that the people in Jericho already believed they were going to be defeated. That that was the word. Oh, my God, these, this Israelite army is coming. And too often in our life, we're the people in Jericho. Too often in our life... We already believe we're going to be defeated when we go for the job interview. We already believe that it's not going to work out when, when we're on the first date. We already believe, you know, that we're not going to be financially successful before we've even taken the first step. And so what we learn through, through Rahab and what Joshua learns through Rahab is that Jericho was defeated not by an army, not by war. Jericho is defeated by its own fears even before Joshua reaches the city. And so there's a lesson there that determination is the way to overcome fears. And what is Joshua doing? We know the creative story. Is, is, he, is he has priests along with warriors march around the city once a day for six days. And, and you can only imagine what this means in consciousness. What it means to us is if we have a dream, and we feel like defeat is inevitable, then we have to march around our mind. We call that prayer, meditation, contemplation, journaling. We have to just sit and be still and walk around that idea in our mind. You know, just to get accepting of it, to be comfortable of it. And then on the seventh day, what they do is the priests blow the trumpets and all the men shout a mighty shout. That's what scripture says, shout a mighty shout. And we know the Jer walls of Jericho came tumbling down. But really, look at the metaphor here for our life. They did not come down from a physical attack. They did not come down from any you know, stones or weapons or, or chariots or horses or, 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 or boulders or whatever were, were the weapons of the day. The walls came down from the power of man's voice. You see, most of the spiritual victories in our life 
are often won because we spoke the victory into ourselves. And once we speak it to ourselves, again, determination clicks in, and there's no stopping us. No matter how impossible a task may seem from the mortal, human, small point of view, you know, if we go along with divine determination, we shall succeed. We shall succeed because we accept nothing otherwise before we take the first step. There is no equivocal step. And I could just imagine them walking around and walking around. You know, here's the dream. And we feel like there's a barrier around it that keeps us from it. And, and they weren't walking around it probably like this. You know, what they were probably doing was staring it down. You know what I mean? You know that stare. You know that, you know that, you know that stare like one of your parents give you when they just want you to like, you know, jump into attention. They don't have to say anything. So I can just see them walking around like. And inside is the dream and this wall that's between living the dream and the people who want to own the dream does crumble. You know, I know why? Because the wall was an illusion. There is no thing in our mind that ever separates us from our dream. The walls of Jericho fell down because they really weren't a power in the first place. We can try and break down our fears by force, but you know that which we resist persists. If we try and fight something into our life, we usually give it more power. But there is no obstacle around our dream that won't fall apart when it's truly ours. When it's truly ours and we have determination, then we develop a spiritual God-given quality that looks right at that college degree, that looks right at that relationship, that looks right at the church, that looks right at our family, and says, you will not overcome me. We ponder it, we meditate it day and night, walking around it, we make sure that we walk around this obstacle in our mind and then we see the barrier for what it really is, a delusion that's ready to crumble down. And all we have to do is be like, boo, and it falls apart. It only falls apart because it wasn't real and because we recognize an intelligent understanding of God was with us every step of the way. We recognize the truth that every one of us is a son or a daughter of an intelligent understanding of God. We recognize we have overcome so much in our life that there is nothing that we can't do when we put our mind to it, when we pray about it, when we put it in the prayer box, and then when we get up with this seat from today, get up from this seat today with the determination that this is already mine. And so I, as I conclude, I want us to remind us, Joshua, 24 chapters later, after his story, what it says is, is in the Message Bible, if you decide, if you decide that it's a bad thing to worship God, then choose a God you'd rather serve and do it today. As for me and my family, we worship God. And we know the old translation basically says, you know, as for me and my house, we worship the Lord. As for me and my consciousness, I worship, I am that I am. And so I ask you, who are you today? Take those two words, write a prayer request, if you want, and take those two words, I am. What follows those words today? I'll tell you what I see when I look out. I am successful. I am determined. I am healed. I am one with God. I am called for great things. As for me and my mind, I worship an intelligent understanding of God. Thank you and God bless you today. Thank you. Amen. Amen.